But, but while I was in San Diego, I'm sure you're familiar with um, Westminster Escondido, and one of the theological distinctions of that particular strain of Presbyterianism is um, just this very staunch two kingdom theology. And so you have Druden, who's kind of held as the gold standard for two kingdom theology. And, and so as you were parsing out the, the different ways in which the Bible uses the word church, I think it's also helpful to parse out for for. Christians to be aware that the Bible also uses another word in multiple ways, that word being world. When, when you think of Christians being called out, what are they called out from? Well, they're called out from the world, but the world in what way? In what sense are we using the word world? Because you're, you're precisely correct that, you know, the world as it pertains to the cosmos, the creation um, is not a curse. And I think some Christians think the creation is a curse. No, it's under a curse. It's under a curse, which is why in, in the expanse of the kingdom of God, as Christians push back against the curse that is on creation, uh, we can have success. Um, and, you know, we can, we can cure cancer by God's grace. We can do, do certain things. But when, when societies and, and people created in the image of God push back, not on the curse upon creation, but they push back against creation itself. They start to fight nature. Right. Well, that's like every horror sci-fi movie that's ever been created. Right. Jurassic Park. Nature finds a way Like you're not going to win that battle, no matter how much technology, no matter how many human advances there might be. When, when you push back against the curse on nature, by God's grace, he can grant success. When you push back against nature itself, it's going to fail. And so Christians have been called out of the world. But I think Christians sometimes demonize the world as it pertains to the cosmos, as it pertains to creation itself. And so Druden and some of these guys, they I mean, the only only thing that they think will transfer um, into the new creation is our physical bodies, which they have to affirm that without going into full-blown heresy, the, you know, the physical bodily resurrection. But everything else, they would look at that verse, you know, the creation itself, you know, with eager groans and expectations awaiting the sons of God being revealed, precisely what you're getting to. Um, they would say that the creation is uh, what it's really waiting for with the, the revelation of the sons of God is a mercy killing from the Lord. That the, the creation wants to give way, die, disintegrate, the, you know, the earth dissolving like snow, uh, take a very literal interpretation mm -hmm. of that. And so in, in some sense, they would never outright say this, but in some sense, it seems as though they've demonized the world as it pertains to the cosmos, rather than saying, no, Christians have been called out, ecclesia called out of the world as it pertains to the world being defined as this, this demonic system underneath Satan's uh, rule that, that where he actually takes, right, our battle is not against flesh and blood, but there is a sense in which Satan, First Timothy says he takes people captive to do his will. And we've been called out of that. We've been called out of this system, um, but not called out of this creation, this cosmos, which I believe is not giving way to the sons of God, but it's being restored right alongside mm. the sons of God. Do you have, is, is, is that, am, am I on mm. the right track with that? Yes, absolutely. S scripture recognize, does recognize two kingdoms, uh, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. That's it. Uh, and they are operative. That's the way of grace and the way of, way of rebellion. And they are operative in every domain of creation. So you cannot flee from one domain of creation into another for safety. Hmm. This is what uh, you were talking about with these dark corners. The thought that, well, if I, you know, politics is, is uh, you know, or, or culture, education, these areas are uh, uh, part of a, uh, a broken natural world. And, and therefore we need to, you know, flee the arts, flee politics, flee law, leave that to nature, leave that to natural law, to the way of decay. We belong in the realm of grace, an upper story of reality. Mm -hmm. And so you've got a notion there that you can flee one domain of creation into another uh, in order to have freedom or salvation or liberation. And of course, that ends up, as you've described it, demonizing the world. Right. Um, and the world becomes, and in, in used in the term, the sense that you used it. That's why when I talked about creation, what what these uh, these theologies do, and I think it's a it's a it's a serious mistake, is they they're fundamentally dualistic. So what they do is they drive a, a wedge between creation and redemption. There's a radical duality drawn between creation and redemption. Now, I think from a biblical perspective, uh, the, 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 I talked about the creation being good, though marred, and that 
touches every aspect of our lives, far as the curse is found, you know, the great, the great, the great carol. Right. Where redemption is directed to wherever the curse is found. That's every domain of creation. Those post-mill Christmas hymns, huh? <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> they're, they're a thorn in the flesh of some. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the, the reality is, is that G- God's creational laws and norms still hold. And he has not abandoned his creation and he's not abandoned his law for creation. Uh, and... Uh, there, there, basically, there are many structures within creation, but there are only two possible directions. So there's the structure of family and church and state and, the, and culture and business and economics and aesthetics mm-hmm. and all these different structures that God has given within the, within the, within the, the goodness, of his, goodness of his creation law word. And they have, are all being misdirected because of sin. Mm. So all the good things that God has created, these laws and norms are misdirected. Now you can... You know, what we might call the, what some scientists have tried to call natural laws, which is just God's ordinary way of working, right. uh, cannot be violated. Uh, you know, you, you try and violate the law of gravity, you're going to hit the ground, and that's that. Mm-hmm. God's, the norms that God's, God has established for creation it, uh, are uh, juridical and moral and, and uh, cultural norms and so forth. These can be violated, and that's what misdirects our lives. And so what is going on with redemption is the redirection and the reconciliation. If you think about all of the different words that the Bible uses for the meaning of salvation and redemption, it's redemption, regeneration, mm. restoration, renewal, and, uh, and so on. It all presupposes that something is lost, mm. something's broken, and it's being recovered and restored, not abandoned. Right. And that's, I think, the, the critical difference. You're right in saying that some of the two kingdoms advocates, they really do, um, you, you just about escape creation with your physical body because Jesus did. Right. Uh, and if you denied that, then you're into full-blown Gnosticism or, or some kind of doceticism or whatever. Um, uh, but it's a failure to recognize the unity of creation and the, co- and the, his- the, the fact that creation and redemption stand in historical continuity. Mm. And it's the result of the importation, actually, of Greek philosophical categories into the Christian faith and a nature-grace dualism, a scholastic dualism. It's like a double-decker bus is the way I often describe it. You know, a two-story bus, like the famous London red bus. You know, you've right, got an upper uh-huh. story yeah. and a lower story. And on the lower story, you've got, you know, law, politics, culture, education, all the aspects of culture, mm-hmm. if you will. That's the lower story. That's the realm of nature. That runs just in terms of basically natural law, um, common, uh, common grace. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you have an upper story, which is the really important stuff. And that's your personal salvation, your personal devotional life, your personal piety, and the life of the church. That's the realm of grace. And the best that the church can do as the kingdom, really, uh, is to sprinkle the pixie dust of the church on the lower story a bit hmm. to make life a bit better. Uh, but actually in this life, uh, you know, it's very Aristotelian. It's, it's the state, right. it's that realm of nature that brings you to the highest degree of moral perfection. But in order to reach salvation and to escape this world uh, and to get out of it, uh, you need redemption in Jesus Christ. And that's why you'll find among some of those thinkers a tremendous opposition to Christian education, a Christian view of politics, you know, there'll be jokes like, you know, there's no such thing as a, as a, as a, as a Christian stir fry or Christian right, plumbing, right. Um, those sorts of jibes, um, you know, because for them, Christianity is about this spiritual, private, upper story of existence. And all this other stuff, that's just common uh, to everyone. So instead of seeing a unity, a basic unity of creation and redemption and seeing the issue of structure and direction. There are all these created structures that believers and non-believers operate in together, but there are two directions. Mm -hmm. Redemption and apostasy. Belief and unbelief. And that motive force is, is put into action in every single area of life. There is no neutral sphere. Right. The realm of nature is not some neutral area where reason, as far as it goes, is all you need. That's the right 
at the beginning, you talked about the sufficiency of scripture. This, the problem is that there's an attempt here to synthesize Greek philosophy mm -hmm. with biblical Christianity, and it leads to a dualistic worldview. And that's where all of the, I mean, there are varieties of two kingdoms view, views you've mentioned, uh, Van Drun, and there's other nuanced ones. I debated Matthew Tuninger a few years ago, um, and uh, there's uh, Michael Horton as well. And right. There's nuances. And then, of course, you've got the Anabaptists. So you've got a, a different forms of, of, of radical two kingdoms views. So it's important sometimes in that discussion to say, well, which, which one are they actually, right. which exponent, which version are we actually dealing with? Right. But they all share that in common that they want to break up reality and creation into parts. One part for the world and nature and reason and one part for God. Right. That's, that's so helpful. And it sounds like part of what you're getting at, and you, you mentioned this earlier, is we, we do believe there are two kingdoms. But the question is, what, what is the distinction between the two kingdoms? What do they represent? Um, and then also, I love, you know, Doug famously said years ago when someone was asking him about two kingdom theology, he said, well, I'm not really concerned at how many kingdoms there are as, as much as I'm concerned at how many kings there are. <laughs> you know, there's one right. king. Um, but it sounds like what you're saying is um, that the two kingdom advocate is going to draw the line between these two kingdoms in regards to... Um, the, the natural and the spiritual, the common and the sacred, whereas um, scripture draws a line between simply light and dark. So mm -hmm. it's two kingdoms, light and dark, um, whereas, uh, so it, the scripture draws the line, the distinction between uh, what, is, what is good and what is uh, bad, what is moral and immoral, light and dark, true and false. Whereas um, over here with the, the two kingdom advocate, um, they, they want to draw it between parts. They want to divide up um, human society and life, uh, human life. They want to divide up sections rather than um, goodness, uh, uh, inherent goodness, God's truth and falsehoods. They want to draw the distinction between common things and sacred things, uh, natural things and spiritual things. Uh, what they would say are tem temporal things versus eternal things. And even there, we would, we would push back as well and say, some of the things that you are saying are temporal. Um, I don't believe the scripture actually would be in your corner. Um, mm -hmm. I, is that, so w would you agree with that? It's, it's, it's not two kingdoms. And then, and then our position is that there aren't two kingdoms, but it's where, how, how are we defining these two kingdoms? Yes. Yes. The light, the light and the darkness represent the two directions that we, we talked right. about the, the distinction between the structure. They can, they conflate structure and direction. They want mm, to say that these good. structures themselves mm. are, uh, they're done with, they are temporal. They're, um, Creation itself, as, as we know it, um, belongs to a lesser or a lower realm than the realm of grace and redemption. And so instead of seeing a unity to the plan of redemption, reconciliation for all of life, in all of creation, that Christ is reconciling to himself, yes, creation is broken up one way or another into parts, and history is broken up into a multiplicity of parts oftentimes as well. So there, some would say there's sort of, there's the redemptive kingdom and there's the common kingdom. Right. Um, and so various divisions are bought, but you're, you're right. Instead of recognizing there is structure, creational structure, and there is direction, light and darkness, for Christ, against Christ, mm. faithful, unfaithful. Um, uh, true, false. True, false. Right. Uh, and, and that leads to other dichotomies as well. Joel, so it leads to your your matter spirit uh, mm -hmm. or you know the duality, uh, a radical law gospel duality, um, a radical uh, church state uh, uh, confusion and duality. So, so rather than recognizing that the totalizing principle in Scripture is the kingdom of God rooted in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, there there are attempts to find a part of creation. That, that is the, uh, it's a kind of reductionistic process, really. You find the bit of creation that's most important, and then you invest your energies there, rather than recognizing that all of creation is subject to Christ, mm. is being reconciled uh, to God. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you would consider supporting Right Response Ministries, we'd be incredibly grateful. You can do so by going to rightresponseministries.com slash donate to give your gift of any amount. If you're not able to support us financially, that's okay. You can still support us in a great regard simply by subscribing to our YouTube channel, clicking the bell, and of course sharing our content with all your friends and family. We can't do this without you, your support, and your prayers. So thank you.